so, this is my uh, second lecture on uh, dummy variables and uh, here is the content of this uh, module uh, dummy variables to separate uh, blocks of data and uh, interaction terms involving uh, dummy variables. Uh, let me uh, explain the object objective of this uh, modules uh, once more. Uh, the variables uh, used in uh, regression analysis are usually uh, quantitative and uh, these variables have uh, well defined uh, scale of measurements. Uh, example of uh, quantitative variables are like temperature, pressure, uh, income, expenditure. Um, okay. and uh, But occasionally, you know, uh, we need to use some qualitative variables in regression analysis, say uh, the employment status, whether the person is employed or un unemployed. Uh, it could be the uh, marital status of a person, uh, married or unmarried. It could be sex, male, female, uh, it could be like origin, uh, different city uh, from where the data uh, have been collected. And uh, there could be significant difference between uh, difference in response level between two sets of data. For example, let me give uh, exam, uh, example of say, uh, I am considering the qualitative variable uh, say marital status and my uh, response variable is say uh, per month expenditure and the regression variable is uh, uh, say income per month. So, I am interested to find relationship between, um, between in the expenditure and uh, uh, and income, uh, but uh, there could be you know sort of difference, uh, you know significant difference uh, in response level. Here the response is uh, uh, expenditure, so there could be significant difference in um, expenditure amount between uh, between a set of married uh, people and a set of unmarried people. So, we cannot really you know plug uh, uh, both data set together and find a relationship between uh, expenditure and income. Uh, so, we cannot put them together and uh, fit a single state line model if there is a significant difference in response level. So, uh, let me uh, once more uh, explain the Tarki data we considered in the last class and uh, using this example, I will say what I mean by uh, significant difference in response level. Uh, okay. So, here is the data uh, we considered in the last previous class and uh, here the Y uh, is uh, uh, turkey weight in pounds and x is uh, uh, age uh, in weeks. Okay. So, we have 13 observations here and, uh, and we have sort of 3 sets of data, I mean 3 blocks you can say. So, this is uh, this 4 data are originated from uh, Georgia and uh, similarly uh, this four, I mean, uh, these four data from uh, Virginia, and uh, this these five data data are from uh, Wisconsin. Now, here is the response variable is the weight of turkey in in pounds. So, what I mean by uh, so whether uh, see whether we can fit uh, 
a simple straight line model between x and y here, we have three sets of data, right. Well, so first you try, we st you start with a simple linear regression model between x and y and you fit a model. So, this is the fitted model and you know how to fit this model. This is nothing but we are fitting y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x and here is the model. So, once you have the fitted model, you can find the residuals. Now, we can see the residuals for the first block are all negative. Residuals uh, for the second block are all negative and here the residuals uh, for the third block are all positive. What does it mean is that the response value for the third block or for the third set of data are because this, this residual is nothing but this is y i observed observation minus the fitted. So, this is positive means uh, the fitted response value for this block are smaller than the uh, original data and similarly here uh, it is just opposite. Okay. So, that means uh, there is a signal. So, this sort of this residual if you now plot this residual uh, uh, graphically. Uh, so, that indicates that, uh, so this, this residual uh, indicates that there is a uh, significant difference in the response lab level. So, we cannot go for simple uh, straight line model between uh, regressor and the response variable ignoring the origin, ignoring the origin means ignoring the uh, qualitative uh, information we have. Uh, that they are from three, uh, three uh, different origins. So, here is the use of uh, dummy variable. So, dummy variable is used to uh, incorporate uh, qualitative information in the regression analysis. Well, so uh, I already talked about this is the, this is the uh, so, we need to fit a model involving two dummy variable because we have three sets of data. So, you know about it already. So, here is the model we want to fit. Uh, the model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha 1 z 1 plus alpha 2 z 2 plus epsilon. So, this is the first dummy variable, this is the second dummy variable. And then uh, the whole model, you know, this can be treated as a multiple linear regression model and it can be written as y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, this is the matrix notation where y is uh, the response here and uh, beta is the coefficient vector. So, that is, that is beta naught, beta 1 alpha 1 and alpha 2 and uh, x is the coefficient matrix. Uh, so, here uh, we can put x naught, x naught is 1 for all the observations and here is the regressor variable and this column corresponds to this regressor variable here and uh, z 1 and z 2 are dummy variable. Uh, for, so, for the first block uh, z 1 is equal to 1 and z 2 equal to 0. For the second block z 1 is equal to 0 and z 2 is equal to 1 and for the third block z 1 is equal to z 2 equal to 0. So, you have the x matrix, you have y vector, you have z vector. So, you know how to find beta hat. So, here uh, is uh, the estimated uh, regression coefficients. Uh, you know x and y, so you can uh, you can find it and the fitted equation is uh, this one. Okay. So, 
uh, I told this one also before that uh, this alpha 1 hat uh, estimates uh, difference in response level between uh, the first block and uh, the last block. Okay? And alpha 2 hat estimates difference in response level between uh, second block and the last block, whereas alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat estimates difference in response level between, uh, between the first block and the second block. Okay. Well, so I go back to the data again. So, looking at this residual, you know, uh, it is very clear that uh, there is a significant difference between G and W, and the difference in response level is estimated by alpha 1 hat. Also, there is a significant difference between the second block and the third block, that means V and W which is estimated by alpha 2 hat and the and intuitively uh, it appears to me that there is no significant difference between the first block and the second block that means g and uh, v which is estimated by alpha 1 minus alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat but uh, you know uh, we can't say uh, whether this is uh, significant or not uh, just looking at the value. So, we need to test uh, uh, the hypothesis that H naught uh, alpha 1 equal to 0 against alpha 1 not equal to 0 and uh, we know that this can be tested using the test statistic this one where x prime x inverse 3 3 uh, denotes the uh, third diagonal element of x prime x inverse and this m s residual is nothing but sigma square hat because and we know that this is nothing but the variance covariance matrix of beta hat. Okay. Well, so uh, you can see the observed value is 9.55 uh, which is bigger than the tabulated value and it has degree of freedom 9, I, I, I told why it is 9 in the last class. So, that means the test is significant uh, at 0.1 percent level. What is the meaning of that? The test is significant means this is rejected, this is accepted and the meaning of this one is that there is a significant difference in response level between uh, Georgia and uh, Wisconsin okay, in response level that means in, in terms of turkey weight. Now, let us uh, uh, let us check whether there is a significant difference between Virginia and uh, uh, Wisconsin. So, for that we need to test uh, uh, alpha 2. So, alpha 2 is equal to 0 against alpha 2 not equal to 0 same test statistics. So, here only it will be replaced by 4 for the fourth diagonal element in the variance covariance matrix and you can see the um, observed value is uh, 10.43 and the tabulated value is 3.25. So, that means the test is significant. Uh, in other words, there is a significant difference in response level between V and W. So, uh, as I told you, you know, uh, intuitively it appears to me that uh, there is no significant difference between G and V, which is estimated by alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat. Uh, let us check whether there is a significant difference between these two or not. So, uh, for that we need to test the hypothesis alpha 1 minus alpha 2 equal to 0 against uh, that null, uh, alternative hypothesis that alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is not equal to 0. And uh, you can check that the observed T value is this one is nothing but uh, alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat and this one is 
uh, is the variance of alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat. So, you can check that this one is 0 0.217. So, the observed value is 1.27 uh, which is less than the tabulated value at 0.1 percent level of significance. Uh, and so, this says that the test is not significant. That means, the difference in response level between uh, G and V is, uh, is not significant. Okay. So, if you see that uh, well, so what what uh, what we are do, what we have done till now is that we are given a three we are given three sets of data, uh, and we have fitted a model involving two regressor variables, sorry, one regressor variable and two dummy variables, and then we have tested the. we have tested whether there is a uh, significant difference in response level between uh, different sets. So, what we have observed is that there is a significant difference between uh, first set of data and third set of data uh, that is Georgia and uh, uh, Wisconsin. There is significant difference between second set of data and third set of data that means, uh, Virginia and uh, Wisconsin, but there is no significant difference between first set and second set. But since there are significant differences between two pair of two pairs of sets, we cannot go for simple straight line model ignoring the uh, origins that means, ignoring the uh, qualitative information um, we have with us. So, we need to go for uh, uh, model involving dummy variable. Okay. So, here uh, just the graphical representation. So, uh, this is the fitted model we have seen before and then the response in the first set or in Georgia uh, can be estimated by using this fitted equation. What we have done here is that you put z 1 equal to 1 and z 2 equal to 0 in the general model to get the fitted equation for the first set. To get the fitted equation for the second set, you put z 1 equal to 0 and z 2 equal to 1. So, this is the fitted equation for the second set. And this one is the fitted equation for the third set, where you put z 1 equal to z 2 equal to 0. And you can see the uh, graph of this uh, three straight line feeds and you must have noticed that uh, these three feeds, they have the same slope. Okay? They are basically the same uh, model with uh, different uh, uh, intercept. Okay? Now, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll uh, we'll talk uh, um, in this class only. You know whether uh, whether we can go for um, a model. I mean whether we can go for the same straight line model. I mean or the straight line model with the same slope for all set of data. That might not be uh, true for all set of data, but here it 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 seems it's okay. Uh, but so we'll talk about the general case. We can we can think of different state line for different sets of sets of data. Okay, so before that, uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, the general case. Like uh, suppose you have R blocks instead of three blocks, you have R uh, blocks, and uh, then how many dummy variable you need? You need uh, let me say it's it's R. Uh, dummies. Okay. Uh, so, it says that uh, in general, 
in general we can deal with R blocks by introducing R minus 1 dummies dummies in addition to to x naught ok. So, uh, how do you assign the value for uh, first block, second block and the rth block. So, suppose the dummy variables are z 1, z 2 and z r minus 1 and for the first block what we do is that we put z 1 equal to 1, z 2 equal to 0 and all of them are equal to 0. For the second block we put uh, z 1 equal to 0, z 2 equal to 1 and this and for the rth block we put 0, 0, 0 and z r minus 1 equal to i. So, this is nothing but you know identity matrix of order r minus 1 and for the final block we put 0, 0 and all 0. Now, so here uh, we have assigned value for uh, r minus 1 dummy variables. Now, if we uh, include uh, the dummy variable x naught which is equal to 1 for all blocks ok. So, this is what this is how you know we we assign a value for uh, for r blocks and we can deal with r blocks with uh, r dummy variables. Uh, so, what is special about you know uh, this assignment? Uh, it says that uh, dummy you must have noticed that the you know, dummy variable columns columns are linearly independent so you have to assign the value you can you can think of some other assignment of the value here but the constant the the condition is that all this column have to be uh, independent okay and uh, they also form linear independent set when they are united with a regressor variable with regressor variable. So, uh, perhaps you understood why this is true because uh, because you, you uh, have to finally, uh, write the whole thing in matrix notation suppose there are r dummy variable. So, you can write that in the matrix notation y equal to x beta plus epsilon and then this uh, coefficient matrix s has to be a full rank right. Uh, so, that is why uh, uh, they are this dummy variable columns are uh, independent among themselves not only that is true uh, they are also linearly independent uh, with uh, the, reg uh, the column for the regressor. So, we have to uh, put the regressor variable here also right ok. Well, so, uh, for uh, for two blocks or three blocks you know what we what model we fit for two blocks we, we fit the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha z 
plus epsilon and uh, suppose the fitted model is y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x plus alpha hat z. Then block A data data are estimated by setting z equal to 0 right. That means, the for block A data the estimated and the fitted equation is y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x and block B data are estimated by setting z equal to 1. That is that is the fitted equation is y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus alpha hat plus beta 1 hat x. So, what we are doing is that uh, we basically fit the same basic model basic model with different intercept right to uh, to several sets of data okay so so whatever uh, we have learnt in now is that you know we are basically finally uh, we understood that we are setting the same basic model with the same slope with different intercept for different set of uh, data but this this might not be true always i mean uh, different set require uh, may require different uh, uh, straight line fit okay so uh, next we will talk about uh, a model which involves uh, interaction terms uh, involving uh, dummy variable. So, interaction terms involving dummy variables. So, we are talking about, we will be talking about general case here. So, suppose we have two sets of data and we are thinking of straight line models. So, we have two sets of data and we are planning to fit straight line model for uh, for both the sets but here we'll be talking about general case you know uh, two sets might have two different uh, straight line that means uh, in the sense that they might have different slopes they might have different uh, um, uh, intercept and all these things okay suppose A and B denote two sets of data and uh, we are considering fits involving straight lines. So, there are four possibilities, there are four possibilities uh, ok. The first possibility is that two distinct lines, two distinct lines. One is beta naught plus beta 1 x 
for the first set A and then gamma naught plus gamma 1 x for the second sets. So, here this involves 4 parameters 1, 2, 3 and 4. And here I am talking about the case like you have 2 sets of data and we are fitting 2 different line for 2 sets. Okay. So, suppose this is the line beta naught plus beta 1 x for set A and suppose this is the line, this is the fit for uh, okay, y equal to this, y equal to gamma naught plus gamma 1 x for set B. So, this is the first uh, case. Now, the second case is case B is that uh, 2 parallel lines. Okay. So, the first line is beta naught plus beta 1 x for set A and the second line is gamma naught plus beta 1 x they have the same slope. So, here you need to estimate 3 parameters okay. and here I am talking about this situation. Suppose, this is my line beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, this is for the y equal to this, this is for the first set say A and uh, I am fitting another line with the same slope, these two are parallel y equal to gamma naught plus beta 1 x for set B. Right. So, this is the second uh, possibility. The third possibility is two lines with the same intercept with the same intercept. Okay. Uh, first line is say beta naught plus beta 1 x this is for the set A and the second one is beta naught the same intercept beta naught plus gamma 1 x the inter uh, the slope could be different. So, this is the possibility third possibility. So, here this is my say y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x and uh, the other line has the same intercept, but different slope. So, this is beta naught plus gamma 1 x for this is for uh, block A, this is for block B uh, y equal to this. And the fourth uh, possibility is, uh, is uh, one line. Okay. So, let me write here only one line. So, we are fitting the same line uh, or just one straight line fit for both uh, sets of data. So, here I did not say how many parameters 1, 2, 3. So, 3 parameters here and one line and the line is beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, this is the line we are fitting for both the sets A and B and uh, here is the graph. So, this is the line y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. Well, uh, 
so we talked about all the uh, four possible uh, situations um, for two sets of data involving uh, straight line fit. Now, uh, we will be looking for a model involving dummy variable, a single model which can take care of all these four possibilities. Uh, so, here is the model. So, we can take care of four possibilities. at once by choosing two dummies including including x naught okay so basically one dummy and then x naught Okay. So, x naught and z and z equal to 0 for, for block A and z equal to 1 for block B and as usual you know, x naught is always equal to 1. And then the model would be would be y equal to x naught beta naught plus beta 1 x this is for the first block plus z beta no sorry z uh, alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus epsilon okay and this can be written as now in anyway now x naught is always equal to 1. So, I can write this is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha naught z plus alpha 1 z x plus epsilon. So, this is the model which uh, involving one dummy variable which can take care of all the four possibilities. Let me explain it. Uh, so, here one observation you can do that you know uh, this model contain uh, uh, so this model this model contains not only not only z, but an interaction term here is the interaction term z x involving involving z. Okay. So, this is the final model and I mean this is the model uh, we have decided and now if you put z equal to 0 we will get the model for A and by putting z equal to 1 you will get the uh, separate model for B. Uh, so, the separate models for A and B are 
given by setting z equal to z equal to 0 and z equal to 1. So, if you put z equal to 0 in that model you will get y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x that is the model for a and y equal to beta naught plus alpha naught plus beta 1 plus alpha 1 x for for b. So, which is uh, you know nothing but gamma 1 plus sorry gamma naught plus gamma 1 x the model for for b. Well, uh, now so, so what given us given two sets of or two data sets you can go for this general model and then you fit the model and then you test whether uh, you need two separate models. Now, we can go for several testings whether we really need two different uh, state line fit for two sets or we can go for a parallel um, lines or whether we can go for a single line or we can go for uh, uh, two lines uh, with the same intercept. All these four possibilities we can check now. Uh, to test to test whether whether two parallel lines will do uh, that is to test the appropriate ness of case B, uh, we would fit the model. Uh, let me call this uh, model star, we would fit this model first. You consider the general model, you fit this model first. So, this is the general model, you fit this model first and then you test whether you can go for uh, I mean whether uh, two parallel lines are enough or not. So, first we would feed star and then and then test this hypothesis H naught. Well, so H naught which hypothesis you need to test? You need to test whether they are parallel that means you have to test whether alpha 1 is equal to 0. You test H naught that alpha 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis alpha 1 not equal to 0. So, I hope that you know you know how to test this one. Okay, I will talk about some more example later on. Uh, so, this is the test you need to do to test whether you can go for second case that means, whether you can go for two parallel lines right. And if this is rejected this null hypothesis is rejected that means, you cannot go for two parallel lines. Okay. So, you have to fit two different lines uh, I mean you have to go for some other cases. Uh, now, to test the appropriate ness of the case C. What is that? Uh, C is uh, two lines with the same intercept. Okay. Uh, to test the appropriateness of case C, uh, we would first fit, we would fit star that general model and then test this hypothesis 
H naught. So, what hypothesis you have to check uh, is that uh, whether they have the same intercept, but different uh, slope. So, you have to check, uh, you have to test whether alpha naught equal to 0 or against the alternative hypothesis that alpha naught is not equal to 0. So, to test the appropriateness of case C, you have to test the hypothesis alpha naught equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that alpha naught not equal to 0. Okay. And finally, to test the appropriate ness of the case D, that means you go for the identical model, uh, we would test what we have to test is that uh, whether we can go for the identical model, that means you have to test whether alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, then, then both the models are same. So, we have to test the hypothesis, we will test H naught that alpha naught equal to alpha 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that H naught is not true. Okay. Well, so uh, let me uh, 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 summarize this part. So, here now we are given two sets of data and we are trying to fit a general model involving two dummy variables such that we can cover. So, we, we, we talked about a model which can cover all the four possibilities and then uh, you fit this model first for your given data set, you fit the model general model involving the dummy variable and then you go for several testings like uh, whether the, uh, you test the appropriateness of uh, case B, if uh, that is rejected. Suppose, if that is uh, that is uh, uh, I mean rejected means uh, H naught is rejected that means, uh, uh, what is that uh, H naught is rejected. Okay. So, H naught is rejected that means, uh, the lines are not parallel. Okay. So, you cannot go for, um, for two parallel lines for two sets of data. Next, you check the appropriateness of the case C. Here, if your null hypothesis is rejected, that means you cannot go for uh, two straight line model having the same intercept. And also, if the last case is also rejected, that means uh, you cannot fit uh, two, I mean you cannot fit same state line for both the data. So, so you, you fit the general model and then you go for uh, testing to test the appropriateness of case B, case C and case D. If all of them are rejected, then you you uh, go for uh, two separate, I mean two distinct uh, state line fields for two, uh, two sets of data. Okay. So, this is what, uh, you know, this is how, uh, I mean uh, we have generalized the uh, case here. Now, let me uh, talk about instead of uh, two sets 
uh, if we have say three sets of data and uh, also we are trying for the same straight line model, then uh, three sets of data say A, B, C and we are going for straight line model. Uh, okay, uh, perhaps you know uh, I should not uh, start this one because uh, because uh, I don't have time today. So uh, I'll I'll talk about uh, now how to uh, how to fit a general model for three sets of data instead of two sets. You have three sets of data. Now how to what is the general model for that? which uh, perhaps cover all the possibilities. Okay, so, that we will be talking uh, in the next class. Uh, thank you very much.